Nvidia's 50 series will be released by the end of the month. Everybody has already seen the fake performance numbers using AI. 4090 performance at 549. Ugh. Brother, ugh. What's that? But what about the real, the rasterized, non-ray tracing performance and the ray tracing performance should you expect from the 5000 series? Nvidia has hidden their real-world performance in plain sight. On Nvidia's official webpage in their product category, they have published the 5000 series specifications. By paying close attention to the Nvidia spec sheets, you may notice that Nvidia has left out one core performance metric out of the spreadsheet but it is hidden in plain sight. Can you see it? Well, it might not be too obvious, but there it is. It is the shader course teraflops performance or quote unquote, the true shader performance, which represent the real world performance of non ray tracing games. So everything that is rasterized gaming performance. Data is available for the 4000 series, but Nvidia hasn't revealed the shader cores, true shader performance. However, it is available in the spreadsheet by just simply calculating it yourself. The way you do that is by one simple equation. You take the shader counts, multiply it by the core clocks, multiply it by the instructions per clock, which is two in this case, and there you have the teraflops. Laying this information out in a simple table, we can now reveal the true 5000 series performance before anyone else. Starting with the 5070, the true performance is actually 6% in rasterized performance. Meanwhile, the shader performance is 40% faster. This would then perfectly explain why Nvidia has not revealed any non-ray tracing performance in the marketing materials. Taking a look at Far Cry, which has ray tracing only without any AI nonsense, we can see that the graph is almost revealing up to 40% better performance. How come? Well, because it has 40% better ray tracing performance. And there is no data on non-ray tracing games, because if they show that, they would show that it would only be 6% faster. And that will destroy the confidence of the 5000 series release. So it makes perfect sense why they left that out and only focused on ray tracing and ray tracing with DLSS. Moving over to the 5070 Ti, there's a similar story there as well. Nvidia's marketing numbers showing roughly 40% better performance. And on the table, we can see that comes from the increased ray tracing performance. Looking at the shader performance, it is 0% difference against the 4070 Ti Super and roughly 10% difference against the 4070 Ti, which Nvidia is comparing this GPU against. So if you have any of the 4070 series GPUs, let me know if it's worth upgrading. Moving over to the 5080, let's take a little bit deeper look into NVIDIA's graph and do a little bit of a pixel analysis. All right, let's just copy the size of the rectangle and then just double it. Okay, and then we can use Canvas automatic middle detector to see exactly where the middle is of the next rectangle. Okay, that's the middle line. And then on the top, we have the top line. Okay, it looks a little bit off, but this is probably just Nvidia's marketing team playing tricks to show the 2x to be a little bit higher, just to skew the results and hide the data. But by putting four small lines in between the 50% range, you can now kind of get an estimate roughly what Nvidia is saying the performance is. And the fourth line is actually equivalent to 37%. We are just below that threshold. So think of this as being 35% performance. Going back to the master table, the 5080 has 51% better performance than the 4080 and 40% better than the 4080 Super. But looking at the NVIDIA table, it has just below 40% better performance. So nothing really scales 100% here. And it could be a result of the bandwidth not being able to push enough data. Because we, as we all know, ray tracing is very bandwidth intense. To explain this performance difference, let's just take a look at the bandwidth. It is 34% faster than the 4080. So there you 
you have your performance. The 5080 is bandwidth limited, at least in Far Cry when it comes to ray tracing. It has the power, but it doesn't have the delivery. Maybe a little bit of a memory overclock and voila, it goes back up to 51%. But ultimately, this is the kind of level you can expect. Sometimes you're bandwidth limited, sometimes you're not. What about the non-ray tracing rasterized performance? The 5080 only has 5% more CUDA cores and with its higher boost clock, it is getting 8% more shader teraflops. So we can expect that it is 8% faster than 4080 in all games that are non-ray traced. Finally, moving over to the 5090, the flagship king and the GPU I will have to get to please all my viewers. Well, take a look. The performance here actually dropped down from the 5080. Why is that? It has 66% more ray tracing performance. It has 80% more memory bandwidth. So why are we not seeing much better ray tracing performance in Far Cry 6? It does have close to 50% better performance in place of a tail, which uses just DLLS without any frame generation. So it's actually quite comparable. So it's faster there. But how come not in Far Cry 6? Well, this time the 5090 is not bound by the memory. It's not bound by the actual ray tracing performance. It is actually bound by the power limits. 575 watts is simply not enough for this beast of a GPU to truly take advantage of all its performance. The 5090 needs a different math than just comparing the ray tracing performance and the bandwidth. Because it's power limited, we have to look at the power math. Taking a look at the 5080, which has half of all the specs of the 5090 at a 360 watt power budget, the expected power budget the 5090 needs to have a 100% scaling is twice the number of the 5080. What that means is that the 5090 would require to have 720 watts power budget to deliver the 66% scaling it has the ability to do. It won't be memory bound, nothing will stop it from achieving that performance. And that's also revealed in the boost clock which is 200 megahertz lower than the 5080. It is lower clocked just to fit in within the power budget. So no wonder Nvidia recommends a thousand watts and I would probably suggest to do 1200 if you're an overclocker because you're gonna run out of power pretty quickly. So the 5090 is pretty much a water cooling and overclocking wet dream. Secondly, the 5090 has 27% better shader performance, but once again, it's held back by the core clock. So if you push it further, you will get up to roughly 33% faster than the 4090 when they're both power unlimited. So there you have it. This is a table which shows you the real world performance across non-ray tracing games, ray tracing games, and if you care about the AI performance, well, there you have it too, where it is 2.1 to 2.5 times faster than the predecessors, which now all of a sudden explains the 2x performance in the frame generation parts. Those fake frames does cost performance. And in some games, it might be tasteful, it might be untasteful. That's not the point here, but the technology behind DLSS4 is actually quite impressive, especially the updated ray reconstruction and some of the super resolution I have seen is pretty impressive. And they've also shown that the updated frame generation actually has less artifacts. And for that, it might actually be a little bit better. So the AI part is actually going in the right direction. And now we actually have a pretty decent model to show why it is so important to have this kind of compute to be able to produce this level of better AI models to produce better image quality. I do like the image quality part. I'm very interested in the AI neural shaders and AI super sampling and the things that actually improves the image stability and also the image stability when in motion. Hopefully by now all the ghosting artifacts will be gone. Digital Foundry showed a very good video. It seems to be going in the right direction. Whoa, hold up, hold up, hold up. There's one more thing which I just discovered when editing this video. And everybody in the tech industry missed it. It was hiding right in plain sight in NVIDIA as keynote, Jensen himself revealed the hidden Blackwell GPU, which nobody in the tech media brought up after the keynote. It is the full-fledged Blackwell GPU. This is the full die where all the CUDA cores are enabled. Jensen covered it in his own presentation, but we were all blinded by his wonderful shiny jacket. And 
nobody mentioned about it. This will either become the Titan AI or the 5090 Ti. Regardless of how they package it, it will come either in one or two different flavors. Just like his slides, it has 50% more shader teraflops than the 4090. It has 100% more ray tracing performance than the 4090. And to differentiate itself from the 5090, it will probably have 50% more graphics memory up to 48 gigabyte, or they would have graphic memory chips on the back of the card, totaling 64 gigabytes of total memory. Regardless of how they package this beast, it would at least consume 685 to 700 watts out of the box. From a pricing perspective, it wouldn't surprise me if it was anything from 2,500 all the way up to $4,000. This card will be released at some point. So if you're considering buying the 5090, do not be surprised when Jensen releases even more powerful GPU. In comparison, it is 13% faster than the 5090. When overclocked, it will probably consume 800 watts, who knows, but this GPU will be a beast. So it'll be interesting to see, once Nvidia releases the Blackwell architecture diagram, how much of the die area is actually used up to fill in with ray tracing cores and the tensor cores for AI. But in summary, as any tech YouTuber or anyone who does reviews, we have to start thinking about the performance in three categories. Not ray tracing performance, ray tracing performance, and AI performance, I guess. But AI performance is going to be more hard to measure because it's going to be the sum of the frames generated, but also the quality of those frames, which is going to be much harder to determine what is good and what is bad. But based on what I've seen at CES, both from AMD with their FSR4 and NVIDIA's DLSS4, for the industry is moving in the right direction and that's good for gamers by all means but i'm also looking forward to how all the ai models improve over time so yeah you have all the information in terms of the 50 series performance in this video leave a comment in the description below and if you like this kind of video subscribe like do all the seo stuff and if you want to support me directly you can join my discord in the description below